All right. Um, everyone can still hear me okay? All good? All right. Thank you. Um, well, I have that it's the top of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. I wanted to welcome you all to our Alliance 101 webinar. My name's Leanne Swanson, and I'm the Executive Director of the Alliance. And we offer these webinars about every, about twice a year, I, I guess, is what we've um, changed it to, to try and help provide a little bit of uh, information about the Alliance to the donation and transplantation community. So we're excited to have you joining us today and that you are eager to learn more about the Alliance and what we do. And so the next 45 minutes or so, we'll spend time talking about the Alliance and some of our programs. And uh, before we dive into that, I want to um, have my amazing team introduce themselves. Um, we're a small but mighty team at the Alliance. We all work virtually, so that's why you'll see us. If you see us on camera, you're logged in, you'll, you'll see that you'll probably see some home offices versus, um, you know, that we're all in a different location. So you can see here where we are all from. Um, a little bit about myself. I've been at the Alliance now just coming up on six years. Uh, prior to that, I was at the Arizona Hospital and Healthcare Association. And in my role at the hospital association is when I became involved in the donation transplantation community, if you will. Um, you'll see uh, when I talk about the National Breakthrough Collaboratives, I worked at the hospital association during that time. And I worked in close partnership with our OPO in Arizona. So I was able to go to a lot of the National Breakthrough Collaborative meetings. And so I really feel like my time in donation transplantation has has been has spanned about 13 years um, since I became involved with them at the hospital association. Um, so I'm pleased to be with you today and thank you all again for joining us and I will turn it over to Corey so he can introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Corey Bryant. I am the Director of Communications here at the Alliance. I'm based in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, prior to that, I uh, spent many years in Orlando, Florida. So I've worked in donation and transplantation for about five years now. Uh, I worked for the OPO serving the Central Florida area as a public education coordinator working in their public relations department. And prior to that, um, in a completely different field, I spent many years working in public relations for the Walt Disney Company in various capacities as well. So I'm excited to be here and part of the, of the Alliance team and I will um, hand it over to Deanna. Thank you, Corey. Hello everyone, my name is Deanna Fenton. I'm the program manager here at the Alliance. Um, as you can see, I'm based out of New Jersey. I actually just recently moved to West Orange, New Jersey, so I'm no longer in Union. Um, uh, but prior to joining the Alliance, I actually worked in hospital development uh, with the OPO that's based out of Jersey, the New Jersey Sharing Network. And so I covered about 12 hospitals uh, sporadically throughout the state here and had some great um, opportunities fostering relationships with a lot of our hospital partners here in the state. Um, but other than that, I'm happy to be here with the Alliance and with you all today. And um, thank you. I'll turn it over to Felicia. Hi, my name is Felicia Elisondo and I am the program assistant for the Alliance. Um, I believe I'm one of the newest members to the Alliance. I've been here for approximately nine months. Uh, prior to that, I worked for Christus Santa Rosa in their transplant clinic. Um, I've served as a financial coordinator, um, business office supervisor, database administrator. Um, so I come with approximately 20 years in the transplant field. Um, I'm happy to be here and I welcome everybody here and I'll turn it over to Glenn. Glenn, you might be on mute because we can't hear you. Sorry about that. Hi, my name is Glenn Matsuki. Um, Hi there. <laughs> My name is Glenn Matsuki. Um, I uh, am the program consultant for the Alliance. I've been here for about a little over a year. This is my second year uh, with the Alliance. And I'm really delighted to be working with such a great and talented team. Uh, my background is uh, I was in the transplant world at Cedar sinai Medical Center for seven years in the liver and kidney transplant program. Uh, I was in transplant administration. 
And then I uh, transitioned to the OPO world, working in the OPO world uh, at One Legacy and then Donor Network West for approximately uh, 15 years in total. So I've been in the, uh, the uh, organ donation and transplant uh, center arena for a while now. And um, what, made, what my passion is uh, primarily driven is because I'm a 24 year transplant survivor. So I'm very, very um, fortunate to be here. And I'll turn it over to my colleague, Belinda Jones. Thank you, Glenn. My name is Belinda Jones. I'm a program consultant as well. I am a nurse uh, by training. I have 43 years in nursing, in nursing administration, 30 years in obstetrics, and then I had five years in dialysis. I was a dialysis patient on PD for five years. Uh, like Glenn, I'm a transplant recipient. I'm 10 years post-transplant with a living donor um, kidney transplant. I've been affiliated with um, transplant centers with Detroit Medical Center as their quality coordinator. I'm recently retired. I've been working, um, volunteering with the Alliance on their Onboarding You program, their Transplant Toolbox, Webinar Faculty, and the Mentorship Program. And I've been consulting with them since January. So Thank you all so much. Um, as you can see, as I mentioned, I have the privilege of working with an amazing team on a daily basis. So, um, so glad that you all um, can get to know them as well. So Corey, maybe, thank you. So what we're gonna do during, like I said, the time together here is to talk a little bit about the Alliance, where, where we came from, where we are today, and where we're going in the future. So I mentioned briefly a little bit about the National Breakthrough Collaboratives. You all know that today we have, it changes daily, but about 115,000, 120,000 people on the wait list. Well, back in 2003, they actually, with only 80,000 people on the wait list, um, it was, the wait list actually was declared a national crisis. And so, as you can see, we've grown that, that transplant wait list. And so, um, we have even more of a crisis today. But the then um, Health and Human Services Secretary, Tommy Thompson, joined with key stakeholders to launch what was called a National Breakthrough Collaborative. Uh, many of you on the call today might re you know, know it better as just the collaborative. So if you hear that term, that's what we're talking about. And the goal of that National Breakthrough Collaborative really was to increase access to transplantable organs. And the OPOs and transplant centers had all of these data measurements that they were charged with obtaining, um, particularly increasing the organ donation rates by about 75%. And so there was this period of time that this collaborative um, program started. Um, next slide, thank you, Corey. So really the point of this collaborative was to change the way the donation and transplantation community functioned, if you will. Um, it, it focused more on a collaborative effort, a team effort among the three estates. And when you hear the three estates, I think you all know, we're talking about the 58 OPOs, uh, all of the donor hospitals. I know sometimes they don't like to be called donor hospitals, but the hospitals that have potential organ donors, and the more than 200 plus transplant centers. And really the goal was to have those three programs work together, have bold requests, bold offers um, to better serve donor families and transplant recipients. And so the collaborative timeline really was over about a five year period. And what you see on this slide, the, the collaborative launched in 2003, which the ODBC stands for Organ Donation Breakthrough Collaborative. Um, the OTBC in 2005 was the Transplant Collaborative. Then they came together in two, 2006 when they brought both of those entities together. And then in 2008 was the Transplant, Transplant Growth and Management Collaborative. And the purpose of these collaboratives each year of, on this timeline, they would have about three, three learning sessions, including a, a big national learning Congress. And those learning sessions 
actually were geared and, and um, formatted after what was being done in the hospital community, which was doing small tests of change. Um, they started this in the hospital community with patient safety and they decided to sort of try this within the donation and transplant community because it was su su successful in improving patient safety within the hospital communities. It was really to change the way um, they did their practices and do small tests of change, go back to your organization, replicate that change, and then have that grow on a national basis. And so that's how they were able to reach all of those goals that I mentioned were um, outlined for them during the collaborative. So as those collaboratives were coming to an end, a group, several hospital, um, actually not hospital leaders, OPO leaders came together and decided that there needed to be an organization that continued this collaborative effort. We all know that there's many membership societies out there, AST, ASTS, AOPO, um, NACO, but there really wasn't an organization that brought all three of those estates together. You know, those were all individual membership associations that kind of targeted their own target population. And so in 2006, you can see that the Alliance actually was established as a 501c3 with initial startup funding from about 35 OPOs. And so our purpose in 2006 was really to carry on that collaborative work. Um, jump forward to about 2011, the Alliance was awarded a three-year cooperative agreement with HRSA, and that continued the work. And a lot of the resources and information you see here on this slide are still in existence today. The organ donation toolbox, which Belinda mentioned, our transplant resource guide, all of our um, national webinars that we offer, our task force groups, which now have been um, transitioned into our leadership councils, et cetera. So that work was done during that three year period. Um, as that grant came to an end or that cooperative agreement came to an end, we decided to establish, kind of reinvent ourselves. And we established a new mission, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, we, re we revamped our website, our, as I mentioned, the task force groups became leadership councils. And really the idea was to continue the work that was started back in 2000, really 2003. Um, since we are not a membership based organization and you can see here our funding model, really we had our initial seed funding from the OPOs and then by the HRSA cooperative agreement, um, by not being a membership association, we went back to the community, this time to the, including the transplant center community and ask them to provide us voluntary support. So we implemented what we call today, it's still in existence today, is our professional partnership assessment. It's an annual assessment that helps, that we ask of the OPOs and transplant centers. And we receive, again, voluntary financial support from them that helps us maintain those resources that were started back in the early 2000s but it also helps us um, develop and grow our programs today. And so this is our new mission that I wanna highlight. Um, the three highlighted items here are really what I wanna just mention briefly. These are our three core pillars. Um, engage learning, which we'll talk about in more detail, but that really is all of our educational programs and resources that we provide to the community. Innovation, we felt it was very important to um, focus and include in our mission innovation. We wanted to make sure that we were an organization that continually looked towards the future and that we were bringing the, the latest and greatest technologies and, and informing the community of the latest trends. And then collaborative leadership, as you can tell, that's really the core pillar upon which the Alliance was founded. And we continue that today, primarily through our leadership councils and a lot of the national offerings that we um, provide to the community. 
And this is our Alliance vision, believe it or not, when we first was, were formed, we actually didn't have a vision statement. So this is a vision statement that we obviously feel is very important and encapsulizes what we are all about. I do wanna mention our board of directors. We, I think one of our strengths is our board of directors. We have a very diverse board. We have a large board. Uh, we have an 18 member board that's comprised not only of OPO and transplant leaders from the community, but as you can see here, all of these or organizational representatives um, that also serve on our board. And I think it's important to point out our hospital partners that are on our board, such as the American Hospital Association, the Joint Commission, and the American College of Healthcare Executives. Again, we wanna make sure that our organization is comprised of the three estates that we try to serve. And so I mentioned in 2006 how we launched our professional partnership assessment. And I'm pleased to say that today we, this program has, and the financial support that we've received has grown tremendously. And we are so appreciative of our professional partners because I think you all value what the Alliance brings to the community and we certainly value what you all do on a daily basis. So we have different leaders partnership levels for our OPOs and transplant centers. And this is our highest um, level, executive level. Um, what I'm most proud of on that slide are all of our new transplant center partners that have joined at this highest tier. It's, you can see it's not just our OPO partners that are supporting us at that highest level. And we're pleased that um, the transplant centers are finding value in the work of the Alliance. We also have our partner level partners. You can see this amazing list of organizations. And hopefully those of you on the call will see your organization listed. We have a colleague level partner. And we also have a discovery level partner. And the discovery level, we're always glad to have new discovery level partners join us. That's that's a tier that we offer to anyone who's just trying to get to know us and we offer some benefits such as um, access to a limited number of our webinars. But um, again, it's an annual partnership. We completely value the support that we get from our partners and really wouldn't be able to offer the programs that you'll hear about on today's, um, during today's presentation without your valued support. In addition to our professional partners, we do reach out to our corporate um, partner community. Um, many of you will recognize these logos and names. Obviously, they are valued corporate partners that help serve the donation and transplant community, and they provide support to us as well um, so that you know, they, we can continue to bring our programs and offerings to the community. So we are, we are um, pleased to recognize them as well. So I mentioned the collaborative leadership. I'm not going to read through this slide, but you can see many of the items listed here under next to each of the councils are um, programs that you will hear more about from our team um, in, a, in a minute during this presentation. But we do have three leadership councils, the donation leadership council, which as it sounds, focuses primarily on improving processes and practices within the donation and donor management, um, well, the donation community, but to help improve donor management. Our Transplant Leadership Council, which of course is geared to improving processes and practices among transplant centers. And then our Leadership and Innovation Council, which again focuses on the innovation aspect of our mission. And so again, you'll, you'll hear more details about all of these programs that are listed. I did wanna call out one item on here that we won't talk about, but I did wanna mention. Under the Leadership and Innovation Council is our National Critical Issues Forum. You see that we offered that in 2018. This is one of two national signature offerings of the Alliance. And we hosted our, so it's offered every other year. And last November, we brought together uh, the transplant hospital and OPO community um, to this forum. The focus of last year's forum was all about innovation. You can find more details about um, that event on our website because we actually have a change packet that came out of that uh, valued program that highlights different um, ideas 
for innovation and how OPOs and transplant centers can be more innovative and in implementing some strategies and practices. So I encourage you to go visit our website and take a look at that change packet. Um, so now I'm going to transition over to Deanna and I will mention Deanna's a little under the weather. So we appreciate her being a trooper and presenting um, um, during this presentation, but um, please excuse if she does have to talk. Um, but Deanna, um, I'll turn it over to you. Please take it away. Thank you, Leanne. And I apologize again in advance if I do have any coughs or anything that do come up uh, during the course of this uh, presentation. Um, but in support of our mission, uh, one of the key engaged learning opportunities that we offer is our webinars. And so annually, the Alliance hosts 25 webinars uh, with an aim to provide education and information on the latest cutting edge topics and to address the needs in the, of the donation and transplantation community. So of those 25 webinars, 10 of them are known as our Get Connected webinars, which are more donation focused. And then we also host 10 transplant webinars, which are obviously more geared towards our transplant community. Additionally, we do offer five um, specialty webinars as they're known. And those webinars will include our two brain death declaration education webinars. Uh, we host one that's geared towards physicians and one that's geared towards nurses. And then in addition to that, we have three innovation webinars, which typically highlight new technologies, um, techniques and ideas uh, within the community. Um, as far as registration and participation in these webinars are concerned, you are able to participate in either the live presentation of each of these webinars um, you can also purchase an on-demand recording, or you can do a combination of both. Just so you're all aware, all of our webinars do carry a certificate of attendance, SEPSI credits, and nursing credits. Additionally, depending on the specialty webinar, so for instance, our um, brain death declaration webinar that's geared towards physicians, we do also offer CME credits. So when it's applicable, we will try to offer additional credits um, for those webinars. Our Alliance professional partner organizations do receive discounted registration prices for each of these webinar offerings. So while registration links for the live webinar presentation cannot necessarily be shared, we do encourage you to arrange group viewings within your organization. Um, so in some cases, we have organizations that will schedule lunch and learns, and they'll invite all of their employees and staff to join that lunch and learn to participate and view that webinar. Everyone who do does attend the um, group viewing of the webinar is eligible to receive those associated continuing education credits. So the individual who registers for the webinar itself will receive an email that will contain the evaluation link as well as some instructions on how to go about obtaining those credits. And so we do encourage you to share that link um, if you're that individual with those who've participated in your group viewing. If you're interested in viewing a complete list of our, all of our live and on-demand recordings, uh, we do encourage you to visit our website. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, our website is organdonationalliance.org. And once you get to the main landing page, you'll be able to navigate to our webinar series, uh, which is under our education and meetings tab. On that page, you'll find more about our webinars. You'll be able to keep up to date with the webinar schedule itself. Uh, we do also offer downloadable flyers for each and every webinar that you can share with your colleagues as well as your hospital partners, et cetera. And then of course, you'll be able to register from there. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to learn about our upcoming webinars from any of our email announcements and of course, our social media channels. I believe Corey is gonna talk a little bit more about that later, so I won't go into too much detail about that. Um, also under our uh, education and meetings tab, you'll notice that we have an Alliance Academy webpage. Um, this page offers a lot of information about our on-demand um, webinar offerings. The on-demand offerings can be shared freely within your organization once they are purchased. So that's a nice um, feature about our on-demand recordings. For about 12 months following the date of that live webinar, the on-demand recording can be viewed and again, shared with your colleagues. And the same continuing education credits are available after completion of the evaluation. After that 12 month period concludes, most of our webinars do become free and available upon request. Um, so if you're interested in being able to view any of those webinars, please feel free to reach out to us and we'll be sure to share that with you. Um, any past webinars, just one thing to note, they do not carry any continuing education credits. Um, but if you're interested in, again, taking a look at them, you can um, navigate to the archive section of our website and you'll see a list, a complete list of all of those webinar offerings. 
Uh, the Alliance also offers monthly education corners. These one page educational pieces are inspired by hot and relevant topics, including topics that are recently presented on our webinars. In most cases, these one page publications are targeted to hospital staff who may be interested in learning more about donation and transplantation. So we do encourage you to personally share these with your hospital staff, post them on bulletin boards, or maybe even email them as attachments. If you're interested in viewing some of our past education corners, they can be found and downloaded under, again, that Education and Meetings tab on the website. We are also a proud provider of a diverse library of resources for our professional colleagues within the community. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Corey to walk us through uh, some of those resources. All right, thank you, Deanna, and thank you for being a trooper. I hope you feel better. So uh, in looking at where all of these resources can be accessed, everything that we offer is conveniently housed on our website, which is organdonationalliance.org. So there you'll be able to find all of our initiatives and offerings, and they're categorized by education, community, and resources. So you'll also be able to find out much more about the Alliance as an organization and the exciting impact that we get to bring to the community every day. So I'll take you through a few of those now. One of the first things that the Alliance produced as a free educational resource to the community was the Saving and Healing Lives video. This is a 30 minute video that was created by our Donor Management Leadership Council and it provides an overview of the donation process for healthcare professionals. So this video offers both CME and SEPSI credits. And you can access the Saving and Healing Lives video for free at any time through our website by selecting the training video under the Education and Meetings menu um, just by going to our homepage. Now, one of, the, uh, of our more recent projects, uh, Onboarding You, is our online training program specifically for transplant staff. This initiative draws from expert knowledge of transplant colleagues from across the country. And what we've done is created a library of online training modules, which are intended to supplement a transplant center's new employee orientation program. Now we've designed this resource to provide all newly hired transplant staff with a, a solid foundation of field related information, which we hope will facilitate success in their new role and also promote employee engagement and retention in what we know is a high stakes career field. So a little more information about that. This program launched with four foundational modules, which lay the groundwork for any new transplant professional that includes things like introduction to transplantation, the history of transplantation, regulations, compliance, and you, and data accuracy and timeliness. Now we've since added a patient education 101 module to that as well. And as we move forward, we're adding new modules on a regular basis, including a series of seven role-specific 101 style modules with more on the way. So these range from transplant social work to transplant finance, transplant coordinator, transplant social work, and one currently in development for transplant administrators. Now this is a two-part series module. Part one is currently available and part two is debuting later this summer. Additional modules are in continual development, as, um, as Valinda mentioned, uh, with our onboarding you work group that she's currently heading up. Now users have the opportunity to earn SEPSI and nursing credit for completed modules. And we know of some organizations who have also discussed using elements of this program for annual competency or training renewals. So this program can also be used to help satisfy regulatory requirements related to training and orientation and is also a Medicare reimbursable training expense, which are several questions that we often get about the program. Onboarding You is available through a one-year subscription and that offers access to the full training library. Pricing is based per user and is available on our website. And there are also special pricing discounts available for Alliance professional partner organizations and bulk discounts for programs interested in registering a significant portion of their headcount. So to learn more, you can visit organdonationalliance.org slash onboarding or reach out to any of us here at the Alliance team. We'll be happy to talk through that with you. So we also launched in coordination with that the Alliance Transplant Mentorship Program in fall of 2017, providing another resource to newly hired transplant professionals or those who might be new to their specific role. Now the mentorship program provides new transplant professionals with access to experienced mentor connections across the country and engages experienced professionals to support them while they immerse themselves into a complex field. So the goal of this program is to establish a network of support for transplant professionals in order to inspire and encourage them, as well as pave the way for career success and longevity in what 
like we said, we know is a high stakes career field. So we're very proud to report that by the end of our last enrollment period, we have established more than 125 uh, transplant mentor and mentee relationships across the country. Deanna, is that the correct st uh, statistic? Okay, excellent. <laughs> So now in, within this program, there are some changes that we've made since we've rolled it out. There are now three types of mentorship that are offered. So we offer a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, which means that you can be assigned to a mentor or a mentee for an ongoing relationship of six to 12 months or beyond for guidance and growth with, uh, within that mentee specific role. There's a group mentorship component where they can gain access to a discussion board for mentors and mentees and post your questions to a vast group of professionals. Or there's a third component in which it's a situational or, or skill specific area of mentorship where they can be assigned to a mentor or a mentee for a limited time to participate in knowledge specific to uh, a particular situation or skill. So we open these application periods now on a biannual basis. So we just closed our summer fall enrollment period and we will be opening uh, our next enrollment period at the end of this year or towards the beginning of next. Now, one thing that I think is important to note, uh, there has been an increased interest in an OPO mentorship program as well. So this is something that we are currently looking to roll out in the near future as well. Uh, we are currently putting together a work group to help us figure out the logistics of that and what that program will look like. But we're very proud to offer an OPO component of the mentorship program in the near future as well. So stay tuned for announcements about that. Now the Alliance Virtual Town Hall series is also a new um, initiative of ours. It's a free collaborative opportunity that highlights successful OPO and transplant program relationships from across the country, as well as the resulting donation and transplant outcomes. So this is a program that we launched new for 2019 and which we invite programs to share their experience in OPO transplant center collaboration and thus offering the solutions to critical challenges or innovative practices that may be emulated for success. So we make regular announcements for the live virtual meetings and the on-demand recordings may also be accessed for free on our website under the education and learning tab. So also within our resource library is our C-Seat um, education series. So our hospital um, C-Suite snapshot is a reoccurring one page issue that focuses on organ, eye and tissue donation related topics that are relevant to our healthcare senior executives. Each issue is typically accompanied by references, resources and tools, as well as a brief video that uh, comes and is generated from a hospital CEO's perspective. These um, snapshots are typically distributed um, biannually. And again, it's used for dissemination to your senior leadership and hospital colleagues. Now we do also have a uh, transplant C-suite snapshot and that focuses specifically on topics relevant to senior leaders of transplant centers and transplant hospitals. So our first issue uh, um, actually focused on provider profitability and reimbursement, while our most recent publication addressed regulatory oversight and requirements. These snapshots are accompanied by a brief webisode that's presented by an industry expert on the respective topic itself. Now we also do have uh, our organ donation toolbox that houses close to 600 peer shared uh, resources such as policy and protocol examples, um, practice checklists, scripts, educational tools and ideas, algorithms and flowcharts um, from all across the nation, as well as many wonderful references and links to current and relevant articles. We do always welcome new additions, so if you have any tools and practices that you're proud of and you'd like to share, um, please feel free to do so using the submit button that's on the um, toolbox page. You'll also found it, find it within um, each of the respective um, sections of the toolbox, so if you want to submit something specific to one of those sections, there will be a submit box option for you there as well. Now we do also have our transplant resource guide and tools, which is very similar to our organ donation toolbox. And while the toolbox serves the donation side, this wonderful resource serves the transplant community. Um, however, I'd say there's one very special addition to this resource, which is actually the um, guide itself. The transplant resource guide is a roadmap incorporating best practices for developing and sustaining high quality patient-centered excellence in donation and transplantation. Included in this are some strategies, change concepts, and actions intended to enhance the infrastructure and operations of all transplant programs. Supporting the guide and housed on our website is a robust selection of resources, templates, and worksheets. 
Now, some additional resources that are also available on our website include the monthly UNOS reports, navigation to all state legislations, and a page of terminology and data references. To access these resources, again, you'd visit our website under the resource tab. All right, thank you, Deanna. So the Alliance Job Board is another new initiative that we uh, launched in late 2018. And so this is a new section of our website that offers employers to post positions from across the donation, transplant, and healthcare community. So professional partners also receive a significant number of free postings per year, the, de uh, the details of which are available on our website at organdonationalliance.org slash job board. So I encourage you to check that out. So with so many resources and learning opportunities, how do you stay up to date so that you don't miss anything? Well, we aim to make that as simple as possible for you. So we provide a weekly digest called the Monday Minute, which details our newest initiatives and learning opportunities throughout the year. You can count on receiving that, of course, every Monday afternoon. You'll also receive a regular webinar digest email that details our upcoming webinars so you never miss a chance to attend a learning opportunity or earn CE credits. We also have our blog called What's Trending, and it's updated regularly for trending news, education, and innovation-based articles within our field. And we also, also publish these blog uh, updates on our social media channels as well, so if you follow us on social media, you can stay up to date on our blog. Each year, we also publish our annual impact report, which is in plans to be distributed this September across the country for 2019. This report highlights the Alliance's impact and the progress we've made together over the course of the past 12 months, including our vast accomplishments in education, collaboration, and innovation are three main pillars that Leanne alluded to earlier. So a, digi a digital publication of this will also be made available following the, uh, the mass mailing that we do each September. Now, we also host a national listserv with more than 2,000 participants, uh, which has been quite active lately, uh, given all of the, the changes coming in, in the you know, ever-changing field of donation and transplantation. So it provides a forum to, for subscribers to pose questions and share best practices among the, their colleagues and the community of practice. So you can sign up for that by visiting our website, and it really is truly a valuable tool. Now, to talk through some of our um, upcoming initiatives, we're quite excited for our National Donor Management Summit, which is one of our two signature biennial events. This one is gonna be held September 5th through 6th in Atlanta uh, at the Weston Peachtree Plaza, and it's open to all healthcare professionals who play a role in the donation or donor management process. Now, this year's summit will be a collaborative meeting, which focuses on discovering what's possible when we work together and share successful strategies so that we can continue to maximize every donation opportunity to save and heal lives. So some of the topics that we've been working on for you with our, um, our planning committee include things like challenges to brain death, lung management, OPO and advanced practice practitioner relationships, images, uh, imaging and data sharing and public health issues and, and much more. So you can check that out. You can view the whole agenda and you can register on our website at organdonationalliance.org slash NDMS. Now, in coordination with that, we're also excited to be hosting our Odyssey program prior to the National Donor Management Summit on September 4th in Atlanta. Odyssey was developed by Dr. Chris Machetti and stands for the Organ Donation Advanced Seminar for Standardized Clinical Education. You know, in healthcare, we love our acronyms. So this full day interactive course was developed and presented by field experts that broadly examines the comprehensive donation and transplant process for the multidisciplinary healthcare team. So the ideal attendee for Odyssey includes early career critical care pro uh, providers, residents, fellows, nurses, physicians, RTs, advanced clinicians, and early career OPO professionals. So Odyssey utilizes interactive lecture, course scenarios, and video to teach the history of donation and transplantation. It provides an overview of the national system, some clinical and legal considerations, things like administrative processes and various roles and responsibilities within the process itself. So each attendee receives an exclusive course textbook with more than 14 chapters written by some of the country's foremost authorities in donation and transplantation. And many are planning to attend the National Donor Management Summit with their physician partners. And so this is a fantastic exposure opportunity to, 
for physicians to learn more about the comprehensive donation process. So if you know of someone who would like to attend in conjunction with the summit, or if you yourself would be interested in attending, we do offer fantastic partner and bundle rate discounts. So um, check out our website for that information. Uh, but I would encourage you to check it out quickly because those advanced registration rates are going to expire on August 5th. Now, we've mentioned our social media platforms and given you the URL to our website several times today, but we would absolutely love for you to connect with us using any of the major social media platforms that you subscribe to. So you can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, and so you can also publish stories, and our, that's where we publish stories and discussions for colleagues from across the country to interact, as well as our YouTube channel, uh, where we post some of our own video content, but also have playlists that take on a number of field-related topics as well. And with that, I will hand it over to Leanne. Thank you, Corey. So um, all of this great work that you um, heard today obviously is done by, again, my amazing team, but it couldn't be done without um, all of our amazing volunteers um, like you from the community. And this is our graphic that Corey designed for our last year's annual impact report. And actually, you might be able to find yourself. It actually includes photos of our amazing, what we call our Alliance A team, which are all of our more than 100 plus volunteers from the donation and transplant community who serve on our numerous work groups and councils to help us develop um, not only maintain some of these programs that um, have been established, but also develop um, new programs in the future. So as Corey mentioned, we are always happy to have you be involved to, to join our efforts. Um, you can do that again by joining the listserv and, and our social media just by being part of the communication. Certainly can do that by you know, participating in our educational programs, our webinars, or our national um, signature offerings. Um, um, but I also want to mention, as Corey alluded to, um, in terms of sharing your stories. And we know our community is comprised of stories, right? That's, there's amazing stories that we hear about every day. But we also know that donation and transplantation is among us as well as healthcare professionals that it's not always the donor families and the transplant recipients that you all take care of on a daily basis, but you yourself might be a transplant recipient or have a family member who is a recipient, or you might be a donor family. You might be a mom, a sister, a, a father, a brother of, of um, someone who, don't, who was a, gave the gift of life. So on our website, you can actually go and share your personal stories. And so you can see here, um, Andrew shared his story. He's a hospital community liaison from Legacy of Hope. We feature these stories in um, our webinars we, during the slides. We have them on our website. We, I believe, feature them in our annual report. So we want to make sure that we are constantly reminded of the work we do, that you all do, but also that, you know, the connect to purpose and why it is that we are um, working with this working within this amazing industry so please again feel free to share your story and you can do that on our website so with that that is really the um, end of our presentation hopefully you had a chance to get an idea of you know again where the alliance was where we are today where we hope to go in the future um, you met our amazing team if you do have questions uh, i think all the phone lines are muted but if you are logged in, you can scroll down to the bottom of your screen and click on the chat feature and you can type in a question. We're happy to answer any questions on today's call, but you can also email us or contact us at any time moving forward and we will be happy to um, get in touch with you and answer any questions that you may have. So. I think with that, I'll just wait a couple minutes and see if anyone has any questions to ask of me or the team. Yeah, I believe the lines are muted, but if you uh, have a computer with a mic component, you can also unmute yourself um, in the bottom left-hand corner and we can, um, we can address your questions that way as well. But it looks like we do have a, a question in the chat. Leanne, do you have any individual memberships? 
So great question, and we don't. It goes back to what I had mentioned at the beginning where we are not a membership-based organization. So we are not set up that way. Our bylaws are not established where we are an individual membership society. So that is why we've implemented the professional partnership. So we don't consider ourselves a membership based organization. We are, your organization can again, voluntarily financially support the Alliance. And as a result, that organization, everyone who works within that organization receives those benefits such as access to our educational programs you know, the ability to um, receive discounts on our any programs that may have a fee associated with them. So hopefully that answers your question. Now that said, programs like our Onboarding You program also are, they, they do come at an additional subscription cost as well. So that is completely available via an, an individual subscription. So that's not a program that you have to enroll your entire organization. You can enroll one user, you can enroll five users, you can enroll 25 users. It really depends on what the basis of your needs are for um, a program like that as well. And I do want to mention, I think, as you're asking about individual memberships, again, that's a financial response that I gave you, but many of our programs, such as the mentorship program, as Corey mentioned, the onboarding you program, um, individuals obviously can sign up and participate in those programs. So um, a lot of our program offerings carry no cost at all. Um, and, you know, you can sign up and such as the mentorship program. If you are looking to either serve as a mentor or be men mentored by somebody, that is an individual, individualized program that you can sign up for. And I would add that you do not have to be a professional partner of the Alliance to be involved with us. So if you are interested in contributing on one of our work groups or anything of that nature or participating in any of our, our programs that we do offer, um, it's not necessary to be a a professional partner. If you're interested in getting involved with us, please reach out. Let us uh, let us know. We'd love to speak with you. Yeah. And so the question too is um, the next question I think is: Are there any specific fees that are required for the organization to join? You can actually find that information on our website under Corey. It's under the annual impact report, right? It's in there. It is. It's on our partnerships page. So if you go to organdonationalliance.org/partnerships, it's there. Um, and it, I believe if you go to the community tab on our website, it's also there under professional partners. And I should mention, if it wasn't clear, I apologize. We do an, the annual partnership assessment and we're actually gearing up right now for our 2020 annual assessment. So in the coming months, uh, we will, um, we're gearing up for that right now, but in the coming months, every OPO and transplant executive will be receiving not only our annual impact report, but also a request for um, to join as a professional partner for 2020. And so that is not only um, a hard copy is mailed, but then we send out numerous email requests. Um, so that information does go to your senior executive within your program. So be on the lookout for that around sep early September. It doesn't look like we have any additional questions in the chat. We'll hang around for just a few more seconds to see if anybody has any questions for us. Um, but if you're hanging around, we appreciate you sticking with us and thank you for your time today. And uh, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Yeah, thank you everyone. We appreciate all that you do and, and um... oh, sorry, Nicole. <laughs> Looks like you're having some issues with um, getting booted out of the Zoom platform. Uh oh, usually Zoom is one of our easier platforms to navigate. So I'm, I'm sorry you're having those issues. I apologize. It might be, uh, you know, it's interesting that you bring this up, Nicole, and I don't necessarily want to um, waste everybody else's time who might not have this issue, but I think what we're finding are, um, I just had a call the other day that hospital or organizational servers are having a lot more 
um, firewalls, which are preventing access to um, any like web-based type programs, which is how our, our webinars are hosted. Um, in fact, someone had an issue with the on-demand recording. Well, those are ho housed in our YouTube channel. And again, a lot of hospitals and organizations are blocking their employees from accessing YouTube. So it's usually, not that I wanna divert <laughs> uh, the, the problem onto the organizations, but most often it's, it might be a firewall issue um, and you might wanna check with your IT department. So we apologize greatly. You know, we're trying to use platforms that are easily accessible, but obviously with the issues and the hacking hospitals have and hospitals, OPOs, they have some pretty strict IT um, firewalls, which is understandable, but it, it, I think, is impacting some of the um, program offerings on, on, um, on your end. Now, that said, I can send you some troubleshooting um, instructions that are through our, our platform that we use to host our webinars, and that can help you kind of walk through some potential issues that you might have with maybe your individual computer or something like that. And also what we found is that Google Chrome is probably the easiest uh, browser to use when um, using our webinars. It tends to be the most friendly. If you're using something like Internet Explorer or a little bit of an older browser, something like that, it might not be as supported anymore as something like Firefox or Google Chrome, which tends to be the more preferred for, um, for those types of web-based platforms. So maybe that's something that you can look at with your IT team as well um, to help kind of troubleshoot some of those issues. And certainly for those of you on the call, if any of you have issues with accessing our programs, please call us in advance. We are happy to help troubleshoot. Like Corey said, you know, we don't want you to miss out on the educational program offerings um, when we would be able to help maybe troubleshoot in advance of the, the program offering. Because I know how frustrating it is when you try and you have a group together and you're trying to access the educational program and then, you know, you're getting a blank screen or something. So we're happy to help. You can call us. Um, one of our team members, usually myself or Felicia, will be on call prior to the webinars and we can help, um, you know, uh, troubleshoot if need to be. It looks like that might be it in terms of questions. So I think we can go ahead and wrap. Yeah, thank you everyone. Again, we appreciate your time and all that you do and we wish you um, a good rest of your day. Thanks everybody for your time. Take care. Bye.